Delivered from Distraction, Getting the Most Out of Life with Attention Deficit Disorder. Edward M. Hallowell, MD, and John J. Rady. Rady, MD. A note on authorship. Edward Ned Hallowell wrote this book. Hence, throughout the book, the pronoun I refers to Ned, me. We refers to both John, Rady, and me. When John is to be singled out, I referred to him by name. Although I did all the writing, the project was very much a shared one. Its roots extending back to 1978 when John and I first met. Indeed, this collaboration serves as an excellent example of the five-step process we recommend in our discussion of the treatment of ADD. Connect, play, practice, achieve, mastery, gain recognition. We drew more out of each other than either of us could have delivered alone. Collaborating wasn't easy, but it was, in the best and deepest sense of this word, a joy. As we contemplated writing this new book, we asked ourselves, can two men who have ADD themselves get their acts together well enough to write a book about ADD again? What you hold in your hands right now is the answer to that question. This book emerges from the 25 years John and I have worked and played together. I say played because even though we're now in our 50s, there's a lot of play in what we do. From working out to brainstorming, this is one of the many advantages of having ADD. As an adult, you are less likely than other adults to lose your enthusiasm for play or your ability your ability to do it. John majored in philosophy in college and I majored in English. Then we both headed off to science and medical school. We both wanted to combine the tradition of the old-fashioned humanistic doctor with the new wave of medical science and technology, taking the best from both. We first met in 1979 when John was chief resident at the Massachusetts Mental Health Center and I was a first year resident in psychiatry. Back then your chief resident was your teacher, guru, parent, and friend rolled into one. <clears throat> your chief was supposed to make sure you ripened from a sleep deprived novice fresh from the boot camp called internship into the sort of doctor people in emotional distress could take comfort from. That was and is like transfusing blood into a patient who is as dry as dust and has no visible veins. John found veins. He found more in us than we knew we had. If you ask me, he was the best chief resident in the history of psychiatry. We've been friends now for almost half of our lives. John is godfather to one of my children and I was best man at John's second wedding. When we first met, neither of us knew we had ADD. In fact, we didn't even know what ADD was. But we knew we liked the way each other thought and we also knew that we went through life differently from most other people. We began to explore what we would later learn is called ADD. Simply by talking with each other and comparing notes on what we observed in our patients, in ourselves, and in what was emerging from psychiatry and neuroscience. It made for one of the most exciting extended discussions I've ever had, and it's still going on. After I completely completed my residency, I went into training in child psychiatry. While John began his career as a teacher, researcher, and clinician, we remained close friends, meeting regularly to play squash. We talked about cases and about brain science all the time. Our discussions led us all over one of our favorite places being the world of ADD. Before we knew it, we were diagnosed with ADD ourselves. The more we learned, the more we realized how common this little known condition was. So we decided to write a book. It took a while to get it done because folks with ADD tend to procrastinate but it got done in 1994 15 years after we met driven to distraction was published one of the first books to introduce the general public to the world of attention deficit disorder since that time brain science has so taken off that the 1990s was dubbed the decade of the brain as the passing years brought new knowledge they also gave john and me time to develop and test our ideas and learn from the thousands of new patients we treated because of all that we had learned since 1994, we decided in 2002 that it was time for a new book. But we wondered, would it be possible for us to collaborate a second time? Once was tough enough, but twice? Being dreamers and risk takers, two of the attributes often found in adults who have ADD, and also drawing upon the faith in difficult projects John had developed on the tennis courts of Pittsburgh and I had developed at Exeter, we decided to give it a go. The last time we collaborated, we had been able to rely on squash to bring us together regularly. 
but age had hit us both. John hurt his shoulder so we could no longer play squash. Then I developed such severe osteoarthritis that I had to have a total hip replacement at the tender age of 52. No more squash for me either. Since exercise had always been a key to our collaboration, we began our meetings for the new book in a gym. After working out on the Stairmaster or stationary bike, we would sit down at the juice bar to develop our new book. Gradually, delivered from distraction, climbed hand over hand out of the neural networks where it took shape deep within our brains. Never in this book do we contend that it is easy to live life with ADD. If you don't help, if you don't get help, ADD can curse you and make you wretched. But if you work it right, ADD can enhance your life and make you sparkle. Sometimes it seems all but impossible to scratch your way out of the mess this complex condition with such a simple name can turn your life into. But there is always, always hope. Consider the story of the Harvard medical student who had been languishing in high school until his ADD was diagnosed. After that, I discovered I had a brain. He told me his life totally changed once the diagnosis was made. He got into college, which he never thought he could do which he never thought he could do. Not only did he get in, he excelled. He did so well in college that he won a Rhodes Scholarship following the Rhodes. He was able, following the Rhodes, he was admitted to Harvard Medical School. When I discussed this book with him, he responded eagerly. Oh, good. You gave ADD its coming out party with Driven to Distraction. Now it is time to give ADD its citizenship in the world. That diagnosis saved my life, and it could save millions more if people really understood it for what it was.